Welcome everybody to our Zoom and Paint uh, party. Let's call this a party because it is a party. Like all parties, you can come <laughs> and go. All you ever really need so far is like black paint, some sheets of paper, and a chip brush. Okay, my chip brush happens to be this guy. It's just a little bristle brush that you get at the hardware store for about, I don't know, the size. It's like a one inch. The amount of intersection between the triangle and the circle and the triangle in the square is minimal. Meaning, you know, hey, you're kind of at a party and you're, you're all like coming from different places. You don't quite know each other. You're trying to kind of get to know each other, but you don't quite know each other yet. Whereas this over here, we're just like, none of us, we're, we're just complete strangers. And we haven't even like said hi yet. We're at a party and we're looking at people from across the room. We haven't like intermixed yet. We haven't intermingled yet in any way, shape or form. We haven't even said hi yet. We just got there. Oh, we're not even like connecting yet. The point is to get you to think about what you've just done. So that in the next slide, what I did was I, I, I asked myself, well, what does this remind me of? You know, is there anything that comes to mind? And I had to think a lot about some of these. This one felt like enlightenment. I don't know, probably because it was detached from the bottom and it, like you've risen up. And again, it, you know, we bring our own knowledge and history to each of these combinations. This one felt like a face to me. Uh, perhaps you're doing a figure. This felt like confidence. Um, this one felt like a mask, like an African mask. So circle, triangle, square. How do I want to treat my square, which now becomes a rectangle? Well, maybe I want to just be kind of all inclusive like this, right? So this is what we're doing today. Last time what we did was static. Okay, so circle, triangle, Notice how this feels different. Uh, but you get these really complex relationships happening. And mm -hmm. the idea here is to begin this canvas this way. Uh, and I explained to Patina that what I want to do is keep doing this, right? And I'm ad living here. Notice it has a tail. Maybe I like cats. <laughs> um, Okay, but I'm really trying to elongate and you can have big and small. You know, it's not like you're, you're trying, it's not like you're, you know, lose all of your black paint or, you know, whatever paint you're using, just wrap it in plastic like this and it'll stay good. Like, you know, the next time I take this out, it's good to go. I didn't have to wash it. I have water down here, but I'm not gonna probably use it. And keep in mind that you can use your extenders like this. I will definitely be doing that. You can use anything, black paint, ink, pencil, art graph, carbon, whatever you want to do. I guess that's the point. We wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't, if there wasn't some really important underlying lesson, because that's kind of what we're trying to do is elevate our art. So if we can, first of all, understand how to kind of dumb things down with these three basic shapes we learned in kindergarten and then learn how to, from the ground up, make them more complex, uh, overlap them, obliterate them, perhaps incorporate automatic drawing. This could lead to a whole new way of you to loosen up. The idea here is to not ever have any fear of how to get started. These top three things, exercises to me are the like, I don't, I can't imagine that if you master these three exercises, you're ever going to have a hard time starting a painting again. Next one is kind of like that where you assert, you, you step back, make a mark and step back, make a mark, keep doing that. And then after that's dry, you obliterate it with white paint and then you repeat, rinse and repeat. Okay. That, because that allows us to get used to losing things. And it also makes the surface full of history, makes it complex. And don't we want that in our art? There's layering there. The process of asserting and obliterating is something we do all the time in our art. But again, by simplifying it down to black and white, you get pretty good at it. You build your confidence that you know you can do it. And that the bonus is you get a more sophisticated, complex surface especially if you end up sanding part of it. And that's the beauty of that thing. Now the circle triangle square thing came in 
as the next exercise, which is what we're now doing. And as you can see, there are variations. So this addresses the blank canvas or panel syndrome where you have fear and you're just like, oh my gosh, I, I don't know what to do. Well, yes, you do. Do the three exercises. And then, you know, if, if it all ends up being obliterated, so what? You got started. And, and getting started is like sets the, you know, your car is now driving. It's not sitting in the parking lot anymore. You're actually driving. Okay. So to me, and, and if anyone has any comments about that, to me, that's what we're doing here is we're starting the engine, you know, consider it like calisthenics, it's, it's exercise, it's uh, getting you excited about what you're going to do today, but not having to think. <laughs> that appeals to me.